don't think I need to say to anybody how important this is that Santa Susana is like a, a Damocles sword holding o over the whole uh, LA County here. The idea, I mean, this is basically a Chernobyl in our backyard. You, you had a number of meltdowns at Santa Susana, which means that there's plutonium uh, and, and other radionuclides that had to be picked up by this fire and, uh, and will be by the next one. And it's outrageous that Boeing is, Boeing is a multi, multi, multi billion dollar corporation. They have more money than God. They could go in there and clean this up in a week. Are they conducting and they operations? They won't do it. Still? What's that? Are they conducting operations? Do they have personnel on site? Is anything happening there? There's personnel on site, but the operations have ceased. They're, they're really trying to just make it's it into the park. Yeah. They don't want to spend the money. I mean, it's the same as in anything, you know? It's a corporation. Corporations have no biology, and the, the corporation is not vulnerable to radioactive contamination, but we are. I guarantee you that, that um, radionuclides, and, all, and I'm familiar with dioxins because uh, we, we defeated a, a trash burning power plant back when I lived in Ohio. Uh, the dioxin is damn near close to plutonium in terms of its toxicity. And God help us, I mean, I, my heart dropped when I heard there was a, a, a camp there for kids. It was yes. Agent Orange in Vietnam. Unbelievable, yes. I've got a question for Liz. Denise, you and Denise, yeah. and also for the other people in the room. You know, I live in Santa Monica, and for a while we were getting smoke from the fire. Mm -hmm. And there were four days when there was a, I had a persistent taste, metallic taste in my mouth. And because of things I know about radiation, I, I know that, that it, it might mean that I was exposed to radiation. And I'm just wondering, whether there are other people in the room who experience the metallic taste from their mouth at following the exposure to the smoke. Well, Lance is in uh, Malibu. You had it there, yeah. So yeah. let me tell you. So, but fire, so yeah. really yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I just see if, fire, if people would raise their hands if they also experienced it? So it's just the two of us. So this is a challenge. So Betty lives in the valley. She lives in the valley. She lives in the valley. She lives in the valley. Who are you? This Can metallic taste has a, a tangible history. West the, LA and Santa Monica. Right. And, and you know, if you, if you experience the metallic taste, I will tell you that uh, this metallic taste was experienced at the Trinity test in uh, New Mexico, the first atomic bomb on July 16, 1945. It was the first test they did. Of course, they had a, a tower that went up. Uh, but then the uh, guys on the Enola Gay that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima reported the metallic taste. And it was reported at Three Mile Island uh, by many, many people. So, and at Fukushima, of course. Yes. When there was uh, in '59, I remember maybe a couple years around that time, I went to a summer camp called Hidden Trails, which is right by the 101. Yeah. And there was a mountain there called Mount Ladyface. And I was just wondering if that area had been affected from, you know, from the meltdown also. It took a long time for them to even get the wind data uh, from the um, meltdown. Um, the gases that were released were, went over the Simi and, and San Bernardo valleys because of the wind direction change. So um, it could be that the scales went off the chart. They aren't able to measure what happened during that release. Um, uh, in terms of, again, once I've seen the maps now about what actually burned on the site, I know there's contamination off-site that burned. We know there's uh, radiation in other places besides Area 4, but um, I, I don't know that, it, it, that enough radiation would have gone far enough to, to Santa Monica. I, I, I mean, it could be, but, but it's, it's chemicals that really uh, were the vast amount of the vegetation and soil that burned, but it could. Lance, you had your, your up? Yeah, I just want to say um, uh, I live in Malibu, and uh, we are dealing with a, a real crisis situation right now and in crisis there's always an opportunity and the opportunity here is to bring the attention because people are are gathering on a regular basis hundreds at a time to deal with uh, how do we get compensated here you know we've lost 750 homes but people are are dealing with um, with all sorts of cleanup costs People who didn't lose their homes, people like me who live in an apartment, uh, have, have been displaced and have, the, you know, the, the uh, they say that when the toxic material from smoke gets in your mattress, you can never use your mattress again without sleeping on toxins. 
That's exactly right. So, so this, so, so there is an opportunity here, and, and Denise, you and I have talked about this, and I hope you come out and explain this to folks, because they're in the process now when they're trying to set up dealing with the insurance people. And they shouldn't deal with the insurance people until they know what all the facts are. Because this is probably going to have long-term impacts on people. Well, let me tell you, Lance, and, and, and you and, know... And, and, and let me just say one other thing. Because someone, I think Tom mentioned 9-11. Remember the week after 9-11? EPA Administrator Christine Todd Whitman right. had a press conference and told all the people in Lower Manhattan, as well as the recovery, the, the responders. Nothing to worry about. You can, you can breathe the air, you can drink the water. Six months later, she admitted that was wrong. And they got rid of the at, evidence. At the end of this year, at the end of this year, right now, more people will have died because of the after effects of 9-11 than died that day. Right. So what I'm what I'm making a plea here for Denise is that you come out and talk to our next meeting and bring the evidence that you've got that there are some real potential that needs to be looked at here so people don't go settling before they know what all the facts are. Yes, it's going to be very difficult to find them. I mean. When, when we talk about 9-11, we talk about the, the building going up, you know, there, there was all sorts of chemicals. There was asbestos in the buildings in 9-11, in, in the World Trade Centers. And then the, the computers burned, the glass burned, the concrete burned. And, the, you know, to have a site like Santa Susana sitting there like a sitting duck in an area where there are fires is putting all of us no, no longer just at risk. We have been harmed. Anybody, I mean, I live in the valley. Anybody who breathed the air in the three or four days, even if it wasn't tangibly smoke, that stuff is there. I mean, there is no excuse for letting any toxic site, and certainly Santa, Santa Susana is one of the worst in the world. This is, a, this is a place where there was an actual meltdown, more than one meltdown, and every toxic chemical known to humankind. And so this has got to be dealt with, and this is not an abstract issue. This is our children and our, and our lungs and, and, and tangibly, and who, who knows when, when the next fire is going to be. Cliff? Yeah, so, you yeah, know. You're with the first responders, too, with their unions and things, because right. just like in New York. Cliff? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we are working as progressives to make California a more sustainable place. We're trying to eliminate fracking and all the chemicals associated with fracking. We're trying to get rid of these nuclear plants and clean them up. One of the issues that keeps coming up, and we just passed Measure W, which is about trapping water. We have a huge aquifer under the San Fernando Valley. Because of this, it's contaminated. Is there any prospect that it could be cleaned to a point where we could trap that water? Because our survival, our ability to even function as a state in, as we get drier and drier and drier is going to depend on our ability to pump water into a clean aquifer under the San Fernando Valley. Is that even like ever going to happen, possibly going to happen, or are we just going to dry up and blow away as husks? I you know? Probably not. <laughs> the Department of Toxic Substances Control has said it will take centuries to clean up the groundwater at Santa Susana centuries and when I we had a proposal from the city of Simi Valley who wanted to start using their groundwater for drinking water like in emergency cases and of course the residents and everybody went nuts and they shelved it um, it was over a third of the wells in, in Simi Valley are contaminated with perchlorate uh, at high enough levels to 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 cause um, impact to health according to um, chlorate? perchlorate it's a solid rocket engine fuel it impacts the Is thyroid. there any way to sort of like sort of partition the aquifer so that it's cut off? That, that's <laughs> over my my uh, pay but I but if, if even DTSC says that the water. groundwater will take centuries to clean up, then yeah. What are the physical effects of perchlorate? It impacts the uh, thyroid uh, for de for for mothers and um, uh, developing children. It can inhibit their their growth functions, um, and uh, it's. Um, Right now, they think they the uh, they said that they had six parts per billion or something is what they're what they're reporting at. Um, the public health goal is one. And you know, we know from the history of 
once, as I mentioned, once the insurance companies get involved, you know, the, the, the price on the cover-up just escalates. And so we have major uh, forces with a seriously vested interest, which we've seen with the nuclear industry, you know, for 50, 60 years now, and all the other major polluters, a serious interest in not telling the story and in, in assuaging the public and saying, you know, there's nothing to see here, there's no real danger, which we know is false, yes. Governor-elect Newsom has an outreach for people to be asked to be considered for all the commissions, all the bodies, all the employment opportunities within the state of California. It is much more open than it was under Jerry Brown, under former assembly speakers. I don't have the website, but if you go to his campaign website and click down to where you can find it, it's a minimum of 15 minutes to do this because you're dealing with your own CV put into boxes. You have you get to scroll in everything from CalVet, PUC, uh, every agency, every government, la labor and hours and wages for industrial labor. They're all listed on there. Anyone who has an expertise, anyone who has a college education, anyone who has a work experience, all, all progressives should be applying for those jobs because if you don't, fill up those applications with sharp, good people to be considered. The only people you're going to get on there are self-employed and lawyers and lobbyists. Well, not and, necessarily. Huh? I said not necessarily. Well, not necessarily, but we need, we need to dilute some of that. And I say that as a county commissioner and as a city commissioner that have been appointed for veterans and for audit. You need to let government know that you're available. This is something for retired people. This is something for people who have the time to commit to being on a commission. But but Gavin, the governor-elect, has made it much more open, user-friendly, and reachable. So please look and apply in an area where you have an interest or an expertise. Please, very much, Yes. Uh, my son worked on a documentary. I'd like to ask you a question. I live in Agora Hills. And we measured on the map as the crow flies, we're about seven miles from uh, Santa Susana. And um, I was out fighting the fire on my own. We called 911 five times, there was no help. And uh, we were watering down trees, we we're trying to save my house. Um, after the fire stopped, and I, I can't give you the exact date exactly, but it was a day or so after, and there had been a, a a, a little bit of a rain. Um, there was the most overwhelming, maybe sick odor in our. I couldn't. I went outside. It was about ten o'clock at night. It was so overwhelming. I had to go back in the house. Can you tell me what that was? I can. The, the fire, as you know, burns all kinds of toxic stuff. Cars go up. People's houses go up. Uh, you know, um, this is kind of yeah, and, and, and so um, it's just, it's really, really hard to say. We know um, from the offsite study that Dr. Cohen did that even without a fire, in a windy day, especially when we're drying a lot of dust, that the, that the dust can, can travel for miles. Um, and, uh, but, you know, when they, DTSC has not done extensive offsite testing, I w they don't think there's a risk from the contamination that's on the site right now. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of questions we're not going to have answers to, and particularly, you know, what was happening when the fires were going on is one of the ones. Okay. What can we do to get them to clean it up? Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> you know, we don't want to attack him. He's not let us down yet. I've been through DTSC directors. I've not. I've been through governors. So we always have hope at the beginning. I want to keep that hope. And Cindy, I hope you're right. Um, He's going to face, he's going to need to know why he will, is it so important that he needs to know because he's going to be going up against Boeing. Boeing already wants to sue DTSC because they won't let them get away with absolutely nothing. So uh, we've even conversations to say, hey, Boeing, would you clean up half of it? No, why would you be? Governor Brown said we can, you know, we have an open space easement. So if he hears from enough people, that will keep his, his fortitude up when he faces the strong, mighty legal arm of Boeing and its lawsuits. How does Boeing have a case? 
How does Boeing advocate? Boeing uh, has got as many health studies as we have that are independent. They've got 10 more that say that nothing ever hurt anybody. When we say 96 and 100, they put on their website, well, nobody's going to live there. We say, so what? It gets off site. They say, no, it doesn't. Uh, Boeing has an open space easement with a very controversial firm. Uh, so they're, gonna, they're using that easement as a way to say we should only have to clean it to recreational. That's based off of people being there very infrequently. Yes. Um, obviously there are a lot of people here in the room who live in that area already. I live in the San Fernando Valley and uh, I'm here as a representative of a coalition of 10 different indivisible groups in the valley that is in outrage right now about this and the, a lot of the people don't really know the facts. That's why I'm here to try to bring some information back to them. We're having a meeting next Tuesday. Um, but my question is, okay. Given that, we're talking 10 different in indivisible groups, not including all the people who are outraged and don't know what to do with it. We've all been to protests. God knows we've been to protests. And what's to stop us from setting up some meetings, some speaking engagements, getting people to show up and speak up and publicize it? We know we have NBC. I went to kindergarten with Joel Grover. You know, so mm -hmm. I have no question. I know other people who could get him to show up too. but. You know, obviously there's deep concern, and well, it's you know, we need to stand up. You know. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, ADA. Thank you. Thank you for the need to help everybody. And have a great show.